Hey, Ty. Hey, Sam. Here we are at Naval Station Great Lakes. That's right. You know, I'm very excited about our tour here today at the Navy's drug testing facility. Me too. This is the place where your urine specimen is sent to be tested. My urine specimen? No, Ty. Their urine specimens? Right. Well, yeah, let's, let's check it out. <laughs> Thanks for having us, Dr. McKinley. Great to have you here. Are you ready for the tour? Can't wait. Great. Well, uh, once samples uh, arrive to the laboratory, they get shipped here from all over the world. Uh, once they get here, we keep them under secure storage conditions. So everything's under lock and key. Wow. So how many do you get on average? We test over 100,000 samples per month. Wow, that's over a million per year. <laughs> that's, that's fast math, Samantha. That's, that's really fast math. I'm proud of you. <laughs> so, Dr. McKinley, um, where do the specimens go next? Well, once we're ready to work on that specimen, the technicians take the box and then they, they open it. They have to make sure that every box is in their uh, sealed conditions and it's forensically sound and ready to be tested. Why do they need to do that? Well, we have to make sure that every single sample that arrives in the box is actually on that form and that everything is, again, forensically sound. Okay. Wow, so with so many batches and specimens coming in each month, how do you make sure it's all organized? Well, we only handle one sample at a time, one box at a time, and everything is labeled. Everything is as a laboratory accessioning number or LAN, is like we like to call it, applied to both the bottle and to the form. That's great. So what happens next? Well, after everything has been labeled and handled and discrepancies noted, uh, we now handle the, the, the bottles and we open them up. One sample gets handled at a time, and the urine is poured into a clean test tube, also labeled with the laboratory sessioning number. Wow, and how many test tubes are there? 150 per batch. Okay, and then how many batches? Each technician handles up to three a day, so 450 different urine pours. Oh my gosh. And they never get mixed up? They never get mixed up. We handle one sample at a time, one box at a time. Great. Wow. Well, where do they go from there? Well, after they're poured up in the test tubes, and we take them over the screen. Would you like to see that? Sure. That'd okay. be great. Right Thanks. this way, lead the way. Okay. So this is the Beckman Coulter 5800 Series Analyzer. The Beckman Coulter 5800 Series Analyzer. <laughs> we didn't have this in chemistry class. Oh, uh, I bet you didn't. <laughs> so this is a sophisticated instrument called Amino Analyzer. It basically uses technology that's identical to that of a home pregnancy test. It looks for small molecules, and if they're present, the instrument lets us know. In this case, drugs. The instrument's fully automated, but we have to have technicians run them. We're about to start a batch right now. Would you like to see? Yeah, that'd be great. So how many can this machine handle? So this can test 750 samples per hour, times 10 different tests, times three different instruments in this section, times our workday is 12 hours. You do the math. Yeah, you figure it out. 270,000? I knew that. So if drugs are found in a sample, what happens next? Well, while the results are good at this point, they have to be reviewed by people, and that happens in the next section, the quality control department, how well we go over there. Sure. So here we are in the quality control department. So this is the section that reviews the data that we just saw made in the screening section. So the first thing they have to do is look at the open control and the blind controls in every batch. What's the difference between the two? Well, Open controls are known to everybody, and they're placed at the front and the end of the batch. And then the blind controls are known only to the reviewer, not to the technicians who do the screening tests. And they're spread throughout the batch. They look like any member specimen. So the thought is, is if the end controls are good, the beginning controls are good, and all the end controls are in the middle are good, then we know that the member specimens were tested appropriately. So if one of the controls reveals a problem, what happens? Well, we don't accept the results and we reperform the tests. So this is just another way to guarantee the fairness of the testing procedure. Exactly. So if there are no problems revealed by the controls, then what happens to the samples that are presumptively positive? Well, they have to go through further testing, and that's done in the confirmation section. How about we go there next? So this is the confirmation section. So all the samples that we found that were presumptively positive in the screening section now get tested again here. And this is where we get the confirmed drug results. Are they the same samples as before? No, it's a fresh pour. We go back to the original sample bottle and pour a new sample into a new test tube. What's this machine used for? This is an LC triple quad or a LCMS MS or a liquid chromatography mass spectrometry mass spectrometer. 
Now, why do you use a different machine? Well, whereas in screening, we use an immunoassay, and that's built for speed for high throughput analysis. This instrument is much, much slower, but it gives 100% accurate result that gives the chemical fingerprint of the drug or drug metabolite that's in the member's urine. So if the fingerprint is a match, does it mean that the test is definitely positive? Well, whereas the instrumentation is very good, it still needs to be reviewed. It has to be reviewed three times, once at the bench level and two more times by a forensic toxicologist. We have to look to make sure that the chain of custody is appropriately uh, completed, make sure that all the lands or laboratory sessioning numbers are present in that batch and that all the blind and open controls performed appropriately. So what happens if there's a problem with the results? If there's a problem with the results, we go back to and have a new sample poured up and tested again. And how about if the results are not rejected? If the results are not rejected, then we, they need to be reviewed prior to be reported to the fleet. And that's done in the review section. How about we go over there next? Great. Leave the lab code. So, is this where the buck stops? You can say that. So this is the review section. The reviewer is responsible for looking at all the data that we produce all in the laboratory from the screening to the confirmation section. Before a positive report can be reported out to the fleet, the reviewer has to look at every little piece of data and make sure that it is both scientifically and forensically defensible and that it is truly a positive result beyond a doubt. Well, what happens if a sailor does get a positive result? Positive report can result in somebody being administratively separated or even court-martialed. Oh, I hope that doesn't happen too often. Well, the drug positive rate of this laboratory is one half of one percent, so we believe that our, our laboratory provides a good deterrence effect for their fleet. Thank you so much, Dr. McKinley. You're very welcome. Sailors, I hope you learned a lot today. And next time you go for a drug test, think of us. That is so wrong. Only if they think too hard. For more information, go to this website. <laughs>